Oh, I can barely get up. I'm almost six months. Look at the belly. Jesus, I'll find a pregnant lady. Oh my hey. god. Look at the belly. Is not exciting. Jesus oh. Christ, you're fully having a. <sighs> Are you pregnant, Sam? So Follow your Instagram. You know I, I d- didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm definitely not excited to be pregnant or anything. Good for you. I can't wait to be a mom. I can't wait. I know. Can you? And the boobs? Have yeah. you noticed the boobs? Me? I no. I actually did not. Dude, no. from like a C to an H. I'm, I'm, li- I'm lying. I'm lying. I feel it. I feel it. Wait. Ugh. I don't know. I don't, like, it's a new shocker for me. I'm kind of into it. Really? Yeah. Pregnant shocker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> creepy, but that's me. I'll that's my take style. It. I'll take it. Yeah, okay. there's a little skinny, lanky shark, and then there's this check out this thing with the giant jugs. I'm like, hell yeah, some more weight there. A substantial woman. Yeah, they they've all gone here. That's for sure. Yeah. It's crazy. So you wanted like to see a, happy moms. You wanted a kid for a while. Yeah, we were just kind of planned. We it was definitely planned, and I think a couple times ago I was here. You said. You can't plan it, shocker, and you you probably most likely can't, but we did plan it. Mm-hmm. So we, right after I filmed that Fox show, we decided that we were going to start trying, and I was trying. By trying, you mean come in the vagina? Well, tracking ovulation, to be to be more ah. frank. <laughs> did I take the romanticism out of it? <laughs> yeah, for me, you did. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to ask you about taking the romanticism out, because does it, it's funny, because like, sex is sexy but babies aren't and making the idea of creating human life is not a very sexy idea but you have to do a sexy sex thing to get there did you find that that was hard for you guys like it's weird to yes. choke, it's weird to choke somebody out when you're trying to make a it's, baby it's definitely weird when you're on a clock with your ovulation because I, these are all things that I didn't know I guess I knew nothing about biology because I was like wait your egg drops for like 48 hours and then the sperm lives for like five days and so all this stuff and I was oh wow I didn't know that yeah and so we had to time it and yeah it's like okay honey uh, and you like you pee on a stick and if it's a smiley face you ovulated so like oh my god I have a smiley face and it it, when it's when it's not yeah when it's not spontaneous it's not hot no it's not so it was it's I tried to put spark in it, you know, but yeah, I mean, I, I, and you want to have sex as many times as you can in a day when you're ovulating. Were so you thinking about a baby while you were having baby? No, sex? God, okay. no. Ooh, okay. I, that's okay. If someone, I know it's not okay. No, I did not. Right. No, I, I tried to be in the moment as mm-hmm. much as you could, especially if it was, you know, like three days in a row, a couple times a day. You're like, Oh my God. I came into vagina and made thinking, let's make a baby. Wait, you did? Yeah. But you, but he said Not it differently. The first time. You said, let's make a baby. He said, were you thinking of a baby? That's a little bit different. Oh. Let's make a baby, I think, is sexy. I think that's cute. The dad's like, oh, I want to be a dad. But if you're, like, thinking about, like, a baby mm-hmm. while you're having sex. Oh, oh it's... Abigail's a cute name. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's tough. <laughs> it's weird, but... But yeah, and then I, uh, after, so we started trying in August and then I, I got pregnant in September. So it was really quick. I'm so grateful. I'm so, so glad. So, so how far, when do you do? Uh, June 16th. I'm six months next week. That's crazy. Man. It's gone by really fast, You'd which scares mom. me. You'd be great. Thank yeah. you. You'd that's all that person. matters to me. Thank you so much. God, that's all. I just can't wait to be mom. I'm scared shitless. Mm. I don't well, want to fuck be. up. I don't want to like, no, you uh. I'll, I'll be good cop here. You you, you you don't. It, it, I, I regret. I think it, uh, most people that I know, because we were in like a mommy and me group, so it's not just you us. You were? Yeah, so we can, I can, I can recommend Where, please? A really yeah. good one to you. Really good one. But, Ooh. So we, I'm able to compare notes with a bunch of parents whose kids are like the exact same age as my kid, and we and, and a bunch of them now have their second kid, and to see how they're just indifferent to their second child. They don't know where the child is half, half the time. I'm not even exaggerating. And the kids are just fine, and they're like, oh, we, we stressed out way too much about oh, the first one. Yeah. Just ignore the kid. It's better for it. I do. <laughs> <laughs> then they'll have to prove themselves and probably get into the entertainment industry Defend at some themselves. point. Yeah. yeah, crazy. You'd be fine. Everything you need for a baby. Somebody said this to me, and this is also true. I'm sure you uh, have a big wish list of registry stuff and all that. Everything you need for a baby, you can get at CVS. Interest? No, you can't. You yes, can get can. a crib there. You can't get a okay. crib or a but stroller. But all the other nonsense, the bottles. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 50, yeah. 50 bucks at CVS. You that over. If you're going to have your guns on the kitchen table, make sure they're on safety. <laughs> That's, that's my yeah. only recommendation. Yeah. yeah, I would say even put put like the 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 weapon locked away and then the bullet somewhere else, right? My dad oh, always I did mean, that. yeah, sure. If you want to get really safe, my dad always. I never knew where my dad's guns were. He never told us where right. his guns were, and I I looked. That's so, yeah, what's scary. I looked. I teach my kids gun safety. They know that if they see a gun, it's not so much my house because you're not going to see a gun that's loaded in my house when the kids are around. 
but if they're at somebody else's house and there was a gun on the table, they would know that they need to notify an adult and they should never go anywhere near it. And they know that because I have guns. If I didn't have guns, I wouldn't know that stuff right. to tell them. Gun safety is so <laughs> imperative. People, I used to get in um, in a debate about this with Dr. Drew because I... He's got guns everywhere and they're loaded and off safety. <laughs> no. He's all strapped at all times. Yeah. <laughs> Shooting off in the backyard. That would be amazing. <laughs> but no, because I, I, you know, I'm... I'm I'm one for, uh, you know, gun control. I think everybody should have a gun, but I also think that we also need to, there needs to be reform, but I also was taught gun safety at a very young age. And that for some reason was something hard for Dr. Drew to wrap his head around. He was like, well, I don't understand how, as, a, as if they were like mutually exclusive. So yeah, like seven, eight years old. I don't know if that's too young. Maybe it is. My dad taught me how to use a gun. God forbid if, if I was around a gun or if somebody came in and I got a hold of their gun, mm -hmm. that I would know how to use it. And yep. I, I, I think that that was important. Still to this day, I'm grateful that I, I knew how to, how to use a gun at a very young age. I don't know what that age should be, though. Look, I feel like every kid, if you see one, you see movies, you see video games... If you've had a couple of classes and you've had uh, an elder that you respect run it, run uh, you through it uh, several times, mm -hmm. what's that versus I've never seen one before and now there's one in front of me, which kid would you rather be around it? Exactly. I would rather the one that had, had seen it and knows about it and has been warned 700 times that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sort of like a, a motorcycle left on. You know, you know what I mean? Like, if you'd never seen one before, kid would probably want to get up and sit on it and see what it does. If you're my kid and there's a full, like a Harley Davidson on a stand turned on, he knows. Exactly. You know what I mean? Don't go over there and fucking think it's going to work out. That's probably going to fall on you. Like That's the point. You got exactly to have point. some kind of, of uh, knowledge about it and right. you be a little safer. But yeah. at the same time, you never want to have a gun. I know. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I know. Why am I talking about that? I don't know. <laughs> when are you planning to teach your baby about guns? Yeah. I don't see. Ah, I don't know. I don't know anything. What's the smallest gun you can buy? I, gosh, I don't know anything. I don't. I don't. I didn't even know what a placenta was. I had to look up what are you a placenta gonna eat it? did. I don't know. I. I what do you mean up, you don't know? I looked up the science behind it, and there yeah. was no science proving that eating the placenta helped. However, oh, I know that science. <laughs> How what do they know? So, there, there's, there's so many women out there and doulas and midwives that swear that it helps women with postpartum. So for that very reason, I'm open to it. I just want to explore it a little bit more. I chuck it in the freezer, and if you're sad, you got it. If not, you chuck it. Well, I no, saw, it's in a pill, though. You know that, right? Like, no, that's for no, pussies. It's, it's no, outlet. you make it a smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> we made a smoothie one that came on the show. Somebody Wait, had a smoothie you? one. No way. Oh, I didn't. I don't fucking oh. eat pussy. I don't give a shit. Oh, it's I don't want magical, that thing. but it's oh, magical. Oh, you Dude. know what you should be paying attention to? What? The fucking baby that came out. Don't worry about the placenta. It's but the fucking giblets. It's the tree of life. That's what it they is call not. it. It is not. The baby is... If I didn't have a placenta right now, first of all, you grow it, which is disgusting to me, but fascinating to me. You have to give birth to it. Did you... Watch your wife. To the placenta? To, to yeah. the placenta? I don't yeah. remember that bit. I'm it's, sure it happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I saw that. Yeah, you give birth Second to time it. I, I saw that. I focused on the human baby that entered the room. <laughs> yeah, I was with Tully. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, they pulled it out and it was like, hey, there's this thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stay back over here with the child that was just born. <laughs> you guys go hang out with that fucking beef patty. Yeah, you want to you you hold up a phone finger for but, the placenta? <laughs> <laughs> <you> do, <I> <laughs> guess. <laughs> but that's how the baby breathes and eats and all that stuff. No, so once he's out, it doesn't. No, I guess hey, I know, no, no need I'm, for it anymore. I know, but some people claim it helps them. So for that very reason, I don't, I don't want to discount what it does for them. But I didn't see any like data that helped support that it would benefit me. So you could just some Dolce whey protein, <laughs> just as good as placenta. I would do plant protein. I do both. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I do both in my breakfast smoothie every morning. Oh, I'm on a, a fucking mission. You have a breakfast smoothie every morning? Every morning. I'm envious. Yeah, yeah you look so good. You're yeah. so healthy. I'm like gnarly. Your skin's glowing more than my pregnant That's skin. That's impossible. <laughs> pregnant ladies can't, you can't beat a pregnant lady. No, he's glowing. Do you see no. he's glowing? But you, Michael Sam, are, are incandescent. That's because I have Ooh. highlighter on. I have highlighter on my cheekbone. It's I want like... highlighter on my cheekbone. <laughs> and handescent? What the fuck are you saying? Incandescent? Did I use that correctly? Is that like iridescent? Why are you asking them? They're fucking half the brain Maybe of you. Iridescent. iridescent or incandescent? I don't know. I wish well, we iridescent I'm, I know, but incandescent is like, ooh, I'm, fancy pants. I know. I'm officially too far away from college. Like the shit that I learned. Incandescent. Emitting light as a result of being heated. Close enough. Oh, okay. Passionate or brilliant. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Oh. Still got it. Yeah. yeah anyway, yeah, I'm fucking hot. That's really what no, we're talking about. No, you look great. I know. So no, I will not marry you. So, <laughs> so. 
So you're so you're you're working out like crazy. I yeah. always see you and you yeah. and Eddie always doing your I'm very workouts. Very sore. I'm in a lot of pain. And uh, what's sobriety now? What are you on? Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because I keep asking my phone because I forget. But I believe nine months is. 275 days and I have 255 days. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. And you're like, you look young. Mm -hmm. Like, do you look at old you and new you and go, whoa? Um, Not to like say that old you was... Uh, no, I was falling apart. I was but falling you apart. But you were just, you were bigger. You were puffier. Yep, I was puffy all the time. You look so good. You yep. look 25. Yeah, I really like you. We should hang out. I should be on TV more because TV people always bring that up. If you hang out with radio people, they're just like, meh. TV people are like, wow, you look really good. And if you look like shit, they don't go, wow, you look like shit. They just <laughs> TV, don't say anything. Just compliment your shoes. TV yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, people. I love your shoes. <laughs> you can't love yeah. me in with all Puffy TV blowfish. <laughs> You're the only TV person I know that's still my friend. I don't talk to any of those other what people. What do you mean? Well, what about Mike? I, I know he's not like... TV, he's radio. He does TV too. Yes, but he's one of us. No yeah, offense to you, a Shaka. Trogloday. He's a troglodyte. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that term means. Me neither. I, I just laugh at everything Kelly says. <laughs> Smart thing yeah, to do. The dumb people do. <laughs> yeah. Take it away with stuff. Oh, Troglodyte man. in prehistoric times, a person who lived in a cave. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought it meant. <laughs> but, so you, surpri you surprise yourself with your with your definitions almost, like with the word, and then you look to see if it defines it, and then it is exactly what you intended it to be. I, I kind of have, have had that neck over the years. That's yeah. annoying. I pick things up along the way. And then yeah. Oh, he's I'm super like, annoying. Know. And sometimes right. I'm totally wrong. Oh, he's pretty. He's so smart. Well, he has to also because if he's wrong and he doesn't say I'm not sure if I'm right, then Twitter will blow up and say that he's a moron. So uh, he catches himself. Twitter's right? the Twitter just can't wait. Like people just can't wait to catch someone on Twitter. Yeah, no. This every every fact that I claim, I'm quick to add. I probably have no idea what I'm talking. Smart. About. That's your disclaimer. I got you on double base the other day, though. You did. You did. Yeah. What is that? I, I still, what I still is, never heard of that. What's that mean? Double bass is a giant, uh, like violin-looking thing. It's a big stand-up guitar thing, like oh, right, right, right. Thing. And I was like double bass, and Tully thought I was talking about the Cello. double kick thing or something. Oh, and yeah, you were the, right, and Jason yeah. was right. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was, he was. So and a stand, that, a stand, that does not a stand, happen. So is a stand-up bass different from a double bass, or is it just another? I think a double bass might be bigger. You know what's crazy is I had a, the reason I I knew that is because a skateboard friend of mine a long time ago in Australia who taught me how to play sanitarium on guitar, mm -hmm. was a trained double bass. He actually went to school and played double bass. And, wow. and he, I would come over to his house, and I remember going, you don't have any frets, mate. It's nice playing something fretless. I'm impressed with people who play fretless. Me shit. too. It's so smooth. Wow. I don't know how you do it. I'm like, where? how do you know? How do you know? You, right. just, you just know. I mean, I guess you could put the little dots on the side, but they never do. No, nah, that's for pussies. I know. They feel it, Michael. I they know. feel it. I know. So, Shocker, you know what you're going to have? A girl. Oh, Aww. You got a name? Sophie, my late grandmother. Yeah. That's beautiful. Aww. I know. We still haven't found a, we still haven't figured out a middle name yet. So we have to figure that out. I keep telling my husband, like, ask, a lot of his family died in the Holocaust. So I'm, we, it's hard to find out what their names were. Right. But one survivor, his bubby, she's 93. She was the only survivor. She, it's, we're trying to get some of those names from her, but it's been difficult. She's so, a Holocaust survivor? Yeah, she left at 17. She ran away from her whole family on the train. She left. She, they were on the train. They were in Poland. They were on the train <coughs> to... At that point, it was so early on. That it was when they occupied Poland. It was before anything. So there was a lot of rumors. And when they were ushered out, they were taken to the town square and put on, like, this train. And uh, she knew what was happening with, like, the soldiers and everything. And so she... She, she told her family, come with me, let's go, and they would not go, and so she left by herself at 16. And then escaped to um, Berlin, and that's where she had Mark's mom. And like, kind of like a, she was homeless, like in like a camp. That w Berlin would not be the first place I would I go know, to run away from crazy? the Nazis. I th I'm sure there were stops along the way, but she actually found like a, like a refuge, like a, like a camp there where they, where they helped her, and like, and, and she was pregnant, and they helped her have the baby and all that stuff, so. So Dang! We, yeah, isn't that crazy? So we need to incorporate her. Her. What about Cash Me Outside? What? No. What's what's her name? <laughs> what about her, Chainsaw? Uh, Esther. Her name is Esther, but Chainsaw. Yeah. No. Yeah. Her name is Esther. Maybe not I, a good idea to ask she me. She doesn't have a middle name. Um, we thought about Berlin since she like escaped there. Had had her Mark's mom there. I think Sophie Berlin would be pretty, but I want to know like her mom's name, her dad's name, even if it's like Sophie Ed or Sophie. What do you make up a Joe. name? Joe. 
But I want it to be. I want it to. But you be... already gave one. You already gave a family name into her, her name. Why don't you give you give her a name that came from you, your mum, her mum. My... my mum's middle name. My mum gave me the middle name of blah 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 What's blah. What's your middle name? My Shane. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm fucking. But we already have my side represented. My dad That's thought my... about it for two seconds. My uh, well, yeah. I was either Shane or Jason. That's how. That's what I hear. And then they flip flopped it. Yeah. So they're like, okay, since we're not going to go with Shane, that'll just be his middle name. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But we're already... Sophie's is my mother's mom, so we're already representing my side of the family. Oh, So it's, oh, we need okay. to rep his family in the middle name. That's but he has fair. the last name. True, that's true. So the middle one should just be a fucking new one. I know, what should it be? Chainsaw! <laughs> I don't know. Kick ass. Sophie, Sophie kick ass. Sophie chainsaw. We, we, we could think about it. We the could fuck? think about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, you know, there's like, like lots of original. You're a very creative person. Do a really creative new thing that's your thing. I know. That's cute. Maybe a combination of names. Yeah. You know, what's your favorite flower or shit? Things <sighs> like that. Sophie huh. sounds cool with like a flare in the middle. or Yeah, we need, a, we need something edgy in the middle because her name is so soft. Yeah. And I want her to have some hard in the middle. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> we all want the best for our kids. <laughs> um, what um, advice would you give me? What advice, like, for newborn stage? What don't advice? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's going to happen. Yeah. That's what I would do. Because I spent a lot of time worrying about what I was going to do. You did? And, and then, yeah, because I was like, man, I'm, you're a train wreck, Jason. You're going to be in charge of a child. This is barely fair to this child. How old were you? Well, she's 11, so I'm 45, 31. Okay. Wait. 34. 34. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how old were you when you when you had your first? Uh, what am I, 30? I guess I was 34 as Were well. you nervous? I mean, I'm excited. I'm confident. But I also just want to make sure I do everything yeah. the best I can to, for the for the kid. My you wife is such, is such a competent, such a steady She's person. She's rad. I met your wife. Yeah, that's right. We did run into each other. That I, yeah. That I, um, I, I kind of just followed her lead on stuff. We're, we're, we're very... Um, stabilizing for each other you know mm -hmm. so like as we went through it i think ha it, either one of us alone might have been a little bit more concerned but we're, we, we we have faith in each other um the one bit that got me that i wasn't prepared for and I, it doesn't it's not going to change anything but it might be worthwhile to know it is i never thought about the fact that you're on the clock the second the baby is born right so she was in labor all day long the baby was delivered i don't know eight nine ten somewhere in that i should know that thereabouts it, and then you're like, fuck, let me just get some sleep and then I'll start being a parent tomorrow morning. Can't. And you can't. It doesn't work that right. way. As soon as you have the... But you've just had the hardest day of your life and you immediately transition into the second hardest day of your but life. But how do you prepare for that? You don't. No, you don't, but I wish... But it's just it, coming. Yeah, it didn't occur to me until it got there. And it, you know, I, li I liked it. I hate work and I hate you know, being babies and not sleeping and all that stuff. But I, uh, my, my ex at the time, she... Uh, bled out or whatever. And Wait, what? She, she, what do you mean? She had to have a uh, blood transfusion and they oh. wouldn't give her the blood because she had the wrong wristband on. Oh, so God. Really? She was sick for a bit. So she couldn't breastfeed or anything. So I had Devin for the first two days in hospital. Wow. And I was just with her. And it was awesome. It sucked. But it was. it's, it's just different. When it's your kid, it's not like... I mean, I didn't sleep. I remember at one time I had like the trolley thing and she was in the, 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 the clear plastic bucket thing with a little bed in there on the trolley and I would push her around because if they're moving they, they sleep. If, they can't, if it's still then they want to cry and stuff. But I was, um, you know, in awe of the, of the baby. Aww. It's my baby. So I know. I can't wait to meet her. Sleep for fucking 10 minutes. You wake up and you go to sleep yeah. and you fucking go mm -hmm. and you feed it and you change right. it and, and, and it's... And you don't sleep, and you're tired. Well, it must be. And I, I, at that time, man, I had answered to nobody right. in my life, and I, I, I sleep whenever I want. And it was all of a sudden I wasn't. But I don't remember going. Oh, I don't know how much I could take. Like if you don't care, you're in. You're in shock. It's like seeing Elvis. <laughs> it's like seeing Elvis. I'm trying. I was going to say no, Metallica, wait. but I don't know if you. you I love you, Metallica. You can't believe yeah. that it's really happening. I've also heard people compare. God, it your to, tits are huge. Like I know it's when, ridiculous. When, when you're like a freshman in college and you stay out all night and then you just go to classes anyway and you never sleep and you're just permanently delirious. Mm -hmm. It is. It is very similar to that. Um, I found uh, all. If you're lucky, all the pain is temporary. All the joy is forever. So, oh, the pain meaning with labor? No, just the oh. shit, the, the nonsense, oh. the aggravate, the aggravation. Didn't look like it was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> she only bled out. 
<laughs> she only had to get a blood. No, when the baby through. came out of the hole, the cut, and then the blood came out afterwards, I was oh, like, so, whoa! So she had a C-section. Yeah, the first one was okay. a C-section. Okay. Second one was out of the badge. Yeah. And, you know, like when you wake up during the night and then, you know, you have to go straight to work and you're really tired. As soon as you get a good night's sleep, that pain is gone. That never happened. But the joyful moments last forever. The best piece of advice I got, too, is it's all phases. Yeah. So when something bad happens, they'll probably be done with it in two weeks. There's a phase where you can't have paper in your house because your kid will want to stick paper in its mouth. Wait, I'd never heard of this phase. Yeah. yeah. You knew this this phase? Oh, paper, is there, you kind of fucking the anything. Paper? They just grab everything. Well, yeah, that fuck I know. It and they when stick I'm, it in their mouth. But I, I, anything. Yeah. They have books that are made. Oh, out that's of right. I got a bunch of them that already. Are made out of indestructible. And for two weeks of your life, they will be indispensable, and then you'll never need them ever again. Right. I got some of those books where they can suck on them, and then you can wash them. Yeah. Blankie's important. Yeah, blankie. I want to. I gotta get a blankie. But and you then can't they have put the, the blankie, blankie for the, the rest of your life and shit. You, you can't put the blankie in the crib though because of. Oh, SIDS. they hold it when you hold it because of what? Sids. The sudden oh, yeah, in, SIDS. Sudden instant death syndrome. Oh, yeah. that's scary. A, that's right. Oh, that's scary. scary. Yeah, okay, well, so many, so many. Um, I guess there is a. I don't know if this was a trend where people were putting pillows and bumpers and blankets inside the crib, and that's when it was when they saw the spike of more cases. But now people are aware. So, oof, can't imagine. Can you work? Can yeah, you work? I've been working my ass off for like the last. I feel great right now. The first three months were really hard. I was sick every day, but I still went to work every day. And then these these three months have been great. I don't know how the. How many jobs do you have right now? I I work still with candle the young, thing obviously candles yes and then I still work the uh, with the Young Turks and then Hulu the Young Turks what's the Young Turks the Young Turks is an, is a, is an online show that's my pop show is underneath it but it's a political show we have seven million subscribers. So it's it's the largest online news show in the world. Okay. So um, in fact, they started on Sirius and then they went to YouTube and then they blew up on on YouTube. Um, like we interviewed Bernie Sanders. Like Bernie comes yeah. to us instead of CNN. So we yeah. have a, a really cool um, like cult following when it comes to oh yeah I'm Pop Trigger yeah that's our pop show, and and then the Young Turks is the the political show. Wait, which, which you're on the internet and you have three different shows on the internet. Well, the pop culture show. So underneath the Young Turks family, you have their political show, and then you have like their pop culture show. You have like their new their um their sports show, and then I write, host, and produce the the pop culture show, which is also like social social stories and and politics as well. So how many shows in its entirety I do, do you do with them? I do the I do the main show, um, which is their politics show, and then I do the pop culture show, and then I do um, what else am I working on right now? And then I have a new show, but um, that we're still waiting on. So we'll see. I don't know. I see you in the in the in the <sighs> the studios where Drew did his show. Oh yeah, I, I still then? work. I'm still with HLN and CNN. I I'm. So what do you of, do with them? I'm a contributor. So if they want me to come in and talk about politics and the Grammys, then I'd come and talk about politics and the Grammys. What, so, what, and what show is that that you come Michaela on? Michaela or CNN or they'll just call You just me. come on CNN? Yeah, they'll just say, uh, you know, what do you think about the with uh, about the pipeline, DAPL? Will you come in and talk about it? And then I'll go in and talk about it. Or what do you think about politics and Grammys or uh, huh. stuff like that? And then I'll come in and talk about it. It's right down the street, so it's easy. And, and um, I've been a contributor with them for like four years now. So um, I love that family. They've been good to me. So is that still uh, Drew's boss there? Is that is he still a boss there? No, I don't think. Well, you mean um, Albie? Mm. Or you mean Bert? Bert yeah, Bert. No, Bert was the EP of Doctor Drew. So when Doctor Drew ended, so did so did Bert's with role with Doctor Drew. But oh. I'm, I'm sure Bert has another show that he's working on. Right. I would imagine. <clears throat> He doesn't stop either. He's always gone from show to show to show to show. So So when do you plan on to, not doing stuff and making know. a baby come out? I think that when I'm ready, I guess, I'll take it, you know, maybe like around nine nine months to ten months, I'll take it day by day. Yeah. And, and then, then after the baby, I'll take the summer off and then start in the fall of 2017. Straight back in there. Straight back in it. So yeah. your husband will be, uh, what's that movie where you're? he's a mum? Mr. Mom. Uh, yeah, Mr. No, Mom. No, he has his. He has. He has our candle company to run full yeah, time. We'll so? figure it out. We'll figure it out. That's yeah. how you're gonna do it, though. You'll figure yeah. it out. You haven't figured it out. You don't we'll seem like the kind help. of person that figures we'll, it out. You sound we'll like the kind of person. To, I, right now, I'm. I'm not figuring anything out. Okay. That's the weird thing. It's foreign to me. I feel yeah. like I'm just like going with the flow, trying to catch up, and it scares me because we don't have a nursery done. We don't have anything done. Like my sister did my <sighs> nursery. <laughs> Maybe in a closet. I know, right? <laughs> So, but yeah, I think we'll have to get, we're going to have to get some help because we don't have any family here and that's going to be hard though because, man, 
how do you entrust somebody to help you with your kid? I guess you do. There's a lot of great people out there, but you just have to find them. So. You got to be friends with somebody first. Yeah, it's going to be tough, but well, you I, know we'll people. figure it out. You know yeah. people that have had babies. Get a person that had yeah. a baby recently and recommends the lady that's good with the baby. and then She's you get probably that with lady. them, though. Isn't she probably with them, that Not lady? all the time. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, luckily, with my schedule and Mark's schedule, we can. We're flexible that way. My like I said... Don't try to. Don't worry about it so much. Yeah. It's sort of like uh, I know this makes no sense here, but we get an AIDS test and you haven't fucked anybody, but you're still worried that you might have AIDS. That's a good analogy. It actually. doesn't fucking do anything, <laughs> right. and you don't have it, so don't worry about it. Right. Yeah. But, you, it's but for some weird reason, when you do get that test, you weren't worried about it before you got the test, but when you get the test, you're like, man, I hope I don't get it. Like, of course you're not going to get the call. What did you do? You, right. did you share any needles with anyone recently? No, you're okay. That's true. I don't don't worry be, about yeah, it because it is. Know. There's no way around it either. That's yeah. the other thing. It's gonna happen. I and know, and I look, if wait. I can be a parent, I can't wait. You'll be fine. I know. Yeah. I can't I wait. Mean, I'm I was, excited. Right. I don't want to weirdly pile more stress on you, but <laughs> I, I feel like I see more parents who who almost are, are it, their biggest problem is being too neurotic. Oh no no! Being, I won't. I don't. I don't being, think being, I'll be neurotic. Than I being just, under concerned. I think you know shit takes care of itself, man. Yeah, babies are kind of indestructible. I don't think I'll be neurotic. I hope I won't be. I'm not neurotic with I have four cats and a dog, and I'm definitely not neurotic with them. Not to compare animals with children, but it's as a caretaker, and having like nine nieces and nephews, I feel like once I'm in it, I'm fine. It's yeah. just I want. I just want my ducks in a row before, and if I Makes don't, sense. I don't. I gotta let that go. Your gotta ducks aren't gonna go. be in a row. I gotta let that shit go then. Just do it. Yeah. Just handle stuff. You know yeah. what you gotta do? What's important? What is? What? That's my only thing. Spreading myself thin. I was just thinking about today because I got a lot of TV stuff that's about to happen. And Tell me before it what's happened. What's going on? You would know. Before they do the shows, there's all this bullshit before the show, the meetings and the setups, and it's hours of, of my day. And then I'm Lots training for a fight, and uh, you know, kids and parent teacher meetings, and Jeez. and uh, you know, I mean, uh, and uh, ex wives and, and future wives, and future and, wives. And, and every all these things you gotta make sure everybody's happy, you gotta, and everybody is happy. And, and I, I think maybe before I'd be like, fuck you. And that never that wasn't working out for me. So now I'm like putting in effort with everybody, but it's a, a juggling thing that you got to do all the time. And there's three TV shows that I'm that I'm in the middle of, and what? and a, uh, a like a a, a a play, like a, a one man like Broadway thing. Wait, what? That I'm working on. So this is doesn't incredible. Mean, doesn't mean it's all gonna. You know, I know you it should know that you throw, Believe me, I know you throw like. 20 posts, right. 100 posts, post-its on the wall and you hope one sticks. Believe me, I'm right there with you. Racing cars, all amazing. kinds of stuff. So there's a, there's a but, I, but I, I don't want to spread myself too thin, which is what I would usually do and then I would burn out. Right. But these days, it's just, um, I prioritize. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of time I would spend stressing about shit that I can't control, which if I added up like how many hours I spent on that versus the things that are like positive in my life, they were about even. Which is fucking disgusting. That meant half the time I was just worried about shit that I couldn't control. Wow. What did, what was the epiphany in your life? Uh, well, I just feel like m with my sobriety, it's like it's like if you go to the gym all the time, you don't just get fit in a day, you know. And you think, and then there's plateaus. You're like, okay, this is about as fit as I can get. And then you work some more, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, I didn't even realize I could do that. That's what's happening with my mind. Wow. I feel like my body's getting better, but my mind is uh, handling things better every couple of weeks or every month. It's it's ev the the things that used to seem like mountains seem really small to me so and healthy. easier to deal with. Would you ever do? Because I know your your books are motivational. Would you ever do motivational speaking? Yeah. You should. I know that's one more thing to Just pile on. Not right now. But, but I, yeah, yeah be, no one's I, ever asked me, so I, that's kind of... But but you know what? Motivational speaker who is high all the time and can't stop drinking doesn't want to have... I, at one point, I remember I couldn't tell anybody anymore because people would ask for my advice on the radio and I'm like, I can't wholeheartedly give you that advice anymore when I know in the back of my head that I'm not listening to my advice. You know, but so that was then, not now. Yeah, That's but it's still like now. it's not even nine months yet, so I okay, don't feel like well, it's that. Like, hey, everybody, listen to me, because I think a lot of people are like you're gonna fucking fall off in a week anyway. <sighs> but but just beside the point, doesn't matter. Yeah, sobriety's it. hard. It I've been around addicts my whole life, and there's some very near and dear to me, and there's ups and downs. Yeah, look, I've got a great team. Of That's what people. you need. It is. 
That's exactly what you need. I really believe in the people that help me. I trust them and they're really smart and really caring and, uh, and I've never been in a position with like this before and I feel really good about it but at the same time just like Craig Ferguson that was in yesterday I realized that it, it, every day is just just that just take it today and tomorrow it could it all could all fall down it could all be the hardest day of your life because that's the problem it's just not you know just alcohol and drugs it's it's you're an asshole you have asshole disease and that's why you started drinking and smoking in the first place to try to numb the asshole so you think that it's better for everybody else to deal with wow. now that that's out of the way i have to just face that i'm an asshole so i've got to like deal with those problems so you are you dealing with stuff that you kind of never dealt with before yeah like, really? tons of stuff yeah. oh wow so you're going to therapy too uh, i was just... i was that i think that was part of making it easier to actually be sober was Year, I did a couple of years of therapy before I was prepared to do it. That makes sense. I because I think because... there would have been a time where I'd be like, I'm fucking fine. You guys are idiots. Yeah. And then the more therapy, the more... And he never was like, you need to stop. He would never say that. Wow. And in the end, I decided. And he was like, hmm, it's probably... It's good. That's yeah, amazing. Give it a go. It's probably a good idea. He empowered you, though. And it came from you. I like yeah. that. <clears throat> I mean, Dax, it was a lot of people. A lot yeah. of triggers, a lot of things. To Andy Dick, at one point, How's said... How's he doing? better now he fell off again he did and yeah, then he's totally. back on it good again good for him he's up okay good but that's it's, it's way harder some people have it worse than others and he has it really hard yeah he's the kind of person where i'm like dude you need to wake up and not bitch because he looks at it way different than you do he, his drinking and he's drug taking is is I'm i don't sure, want to say what you know i'm it, sure he's the hardest on himself that's what people don't understand when he came in here the first couple of times he started crying talking about drinking a beer yeah, i'm like man i i'll miss beer but Right. I ain't crying about it. Right, right. Know? I, I'm, I, well, I miss what, what is not gone. I miss like the potential of what I have, mm -hmm. I, and I'm not gonna miss it. And I'm not gonna. I just know that my parents have given me stuff, and I'm not giving it to mine. It, it ends here. Yeah. They don't have. Look, like, well, I don't want to hear it when I'm 25. Oh, it's because fucking no, no, he didn't. He didn't make your mm -hmm. shit hard. He did everything he could for you, and you know that. So yeah. you get off your ass and be somebody. Amen. That's rad. So That's I, cool. I have TV people that are coming today for my because I have a docu series, but this is it's all bullshit until it's on TV. I know, believe me. Until but they're filming. They're like you know because they want to film the family thing. Kind of what, like oh at home. Yeah. <gasps> and I'm a little bit worried about Devin because she's kind of she's 11 and she's with all her friends. She was asking me for an Instagram account the other day, and I'm like no. Nah. Uh -oh. I'm like, maybe when you're 14. She'll and she be was fine. like, 13. I'm like, we'll talk about <laughs> she, that when you're 13. She, she negotiated. Fuck yeah, at 11. She's already <laughs> negotiating in three years from now, two years from now. Smart kid. Yeah, well, she didn't get that from me. But the, uh, she loves, she thinks fame's cool. Okay. Well, she's so, young. I know, but I, I, I worry about having cameras in, in around her. Like, I know my son her. won't give a shit. Right. But she'll be like, oh. Oh, you're filming, and, and I'm like, it won't. I don't want her. If it actually became a TV show, I don't want her friends to think that that's that I get she's it. cool. That would be my worst fear. Because it won't worst... be on TV for very long, and then when it's gone, you don't have to think less you of yourself because you're not on TV. Right? It shouldn't. I'm worried about the after effect of it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you thought you were super cool at school because. You were on you have TV a reality for show a year. Docu series, yeah. if you want to call it, same thing though, right? Reality. Yeah, no, show, that's the new. It's the only yeah. reason you call it that is because that's what they pick up now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they don't pick up reality shows; they pick up docu series. Exactly. Yeah. That'd be interesting though, because there's so much going on in your life, and your life, like when I watch your Instagram stories, it's entertaining. So it would, it's smart. I mean, whoever's producing it, they've got to be crazy. What that whatever network uh, picks not to pick it up they right. have to pick it up well you should be in there for the pitch because you're great at it oh it'd be it'd be really really good really good uh cullen is on the phone i have no idea it's... You t cullen do you have some punk rock information for us <laughs> yes go. that's that's there easy go. yes got it up thanks cullen uh designer babies may be closer to being a reality a major new ethics report leaves open the possibility that uh, with stringent oversight existing tools could be used to precisely edit genes inside living cells nobody's as yet ethically on board with making super babies or blue-eyed babies or anything like that but uh, the this report leaves open the possibility of uh, screening babies for hereditary diseases and changing genes to try to alleviate that. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, you'd have to do it, right? The diseases, I understand, but not the, the not <laughs> yeah. physicality. Well, That's no, 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 but, weird. No, but 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 
people will say there might be a slippery slope. But if somebody told you that, I mean, I was a, I was a new parent not that long ago, and somebody said we we have this technology, and you know, you're not the guinea pig. We've been using it for a few years, and your kid is at a humongous risk of having blah blah blah. And we can just go in there, and no big deal, and it'll just never be an issue in the kid's life. You got to seriously think about it. I would think about that. I know some people would say you're playing God. I think if it comes to like I said, uh, predisposed like genetical things, I would be. How would you not want to give your your kid the best of uh you know to to go into life on their best foot forward but but I don't like the whole blue eyes thing and all that. That sounds scary. That's almost like you're like designing a superior race. That's well, that, weird. That's because you married a Jewish guy. You got a weird about Tully saying that. He didn't <laughs> mean did. that. He meant wolf <laughs> eyes. Eyes like a wolf. Okay, I like wolf <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. eyes. I yeah. maybe I would do wolf eyes for Sophie. Mike Catherine would be twelve feet tall. Mike Catherine would have some advice. He said oh. uh, to uh, baby tip for Sam. Uh, she should let us all fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, as I mentioned earlier, trouble yeah. night. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is sound advice. I get, I get daily. It's so funny. I never know what what photos I'll get from Mike. Some photos are of, are of dear Magnolia, oh, and then some. Yeah, photos, I got that too. And then you get the gnarly photos. Yeah, I'm like, it's, and a lot. No, of I mean, her, I, I got. I just get inside off. Oh, you don't get Magnolia photos. What's a Magnolia? Oh, her daughter. Oh, that's all what he calls his asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he, he isn't said to be photos of his kid. How can you come up with them in the same timeline oh, for they're, me? They're, if I look, it's it's Magnolia, like, butthole. Magnolia, sex. And I'm like, oh my God, Mike, like, please, just, just Magnolia wow. pictures, please. But yeah, they're all they're all. You layered. guys in the green room getting any Magnolia? Wait, you are? I want a Magnolia. Wait, he sent you a baby photo? Why is... Why? This is almost weirder than him sending prolapse. Yeah, he I'm, sends baby got, pictures around. Yesterday, I got a picture of his daughter playing in the park and then an asshole shooting out. That's what happens to me. No, that's probably okay. was supposed to go to me because mine are always alternating. Magnolia, bad. Magnolia. I got bad. a bouquet of flowers that are inside assholes instead of flowers. You it's get what? Pretty cool. He what? Yes. Valentine's oh. Day. I got a bouquet of flowers, oh, but all the, flowers, all the roses yeah. are inside out. Assholes. I believe I got that too. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. clever. Yeah. yeah, he's great for radio. I love him. <clears throat> he's such a good guy. He's such a good guy. Yeah, he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. How's the candle company going? Candle company's going good. Yeah. We just got back from New York. We do a trade show out there, and it went really well. A candle so trade show? It's it's a home goods show. Oh, so okay. you'll have everyone there from, like, Jonathan Adler to, like, these really big companies. Um, but candles being within the home goods uh, category, you can set up and try and... It's What's all the candle name again? Uh, now it's Byron & Co. It's our last name. Byron & So Co. it was Wicked. Wicked we still use. We use that for, like, the pre-drips, and it's kind of like a a collection or or more so a company underneath like the parent company which is smart Co. yeah so now we can do more like gothic things under wicked and more like boutique things under byron and co did that tv yeah. show help it helped immensely it, it really did it i mean exposure always helps so but, uh, but, but advice wise yeah i think it did okay. i 100 percent think it helped yeah cool it helped us kind of like open up our, our our eyes and get out of just pushing like this more like darker agenda. Yeah. Because not everybody wants, you know, like dark, you know, creepy candles. No, People only want... me and Katie want that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I love dark, creepy candles. So we had to kind of like open uh, open up our minds and try and design for people that weren't us. Yeah. And that's tough. But yeah. hey, then you, you can be in stores all over the, the world instead of just like in like the kind of like the like I feel like before we were more in like the, the LA's the New York's like more of like you know punky and and people that are a bit more progressive but now I feel like we're in a lot of conservative like little homes too so candles are cool candles are really cool it's mm. I'm stoked on it we were supposed to do like lotions and soaps and all that but that's all on hold so we'll see yeah I don't like uh the candles because I when I was I always liked candles when I, when I was first moved to America and I would just have like a one bedroom apartment and like a car that didn't have insurance or anything I would just buy it and just drive it around because I didn't have a license or anything and then I would buy candles from the same place that I would buy my chairs for the house which would be from like a supermarket or something mm -hmm. so I would just have like lawn chairs in the living room oh my gosh and, and uh and a TV, my TV would be on the TV box that it came in. Wow! And then I would buy the candles, like you know, what I mean the the vanilla scented candle from Kmart or whatever. Right, like the Yankee candle. Yeah, and then for to know that that was the game to the what I am now, 
just to just to have a little because I I really do like certain smells. I'll deal with other shit, but it's sort of like once you have something good, you can't go back. Are you vanilla? Is that why you brought up vanilla? What is your your base that you gravitate towards? I used to be, but now I'm not. Now so I'm, you've changed. Yeah. Me too. I used to be all about vanilla. <laughs> now I'm more like I, maybe it's a more sophisticated scent that I like. I'm definitely more sophisticated than <laughs> scent. Well, Sam, people can uh, find your candles at Byron B I R E N and co.com and they can find you at Sam Shocker on Twitter and yep. Instagram yes yes it's always good to see you Sam oh, I'm, I miss you guys already I love you guys I gotta come back here more often please but you, you I mean I could come back as a mom next time hopefully I'll come back when I'm don't about bring to the baby. Don't bring the baby I wouldn't bring the baby yeah. nobody wants a crying baby we don't no no, no. we I pretend bear, we bear, like bear, kids bear, but we don't I barely want a man <laughs> yeah. but thank you for having me thank you alright we'll be back Oh, I have to go to Denver now. I have my luggage. You're going to Denver? Yeah, my luggage is in your in your little green room over there. Dang. Oh, I mean, I can't, you know, I say oof probably 30 times a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>